dump it, dump it right in here, Alice. I don't even know if how, I can lift how, how it. How big do you think it is? What's your weight oh guess? Oh my gosh, at least 100. I'm guessing 17. No, oh, it's heavy. <laughs> so these wow. are Lincoln. They're like a 70s leopard stripe. Can't believe I thought that one was 100 pounds. <laughs> it was really heavy. This okay, is, so this is 64. By Alice's count, I weigh 3,000 pounds. <laughs> the journey for fish to travel from Sitka to Madison is all in the timing. At this stage of processing, are you concerned about how many fish you can cut like per hour, or is it just you're, you're more concerned about doing it right? The first thing is doing it right. If we're messing up our cuts, if we're not producing good quality fish, yeah. it's like, what are we even doing all this work right. for? You have to reach your production goal. You have to get your fish to the CSF when it needs to get there. Yeah. You understand that if you're just going really slow and trying to focus on quality and mm -hmm. fish is sitting here for three days, that it's right. going to degrade. Okay. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. During peak coho salmon season, Sitka salmon shares often sees over a thousand fish move for their plant in a single 24 hour day. Once that fish is removed from ice, the clock starts ticking. On average, it takes just 20 minutes for that fish to make it into the blast freezer. Now it's been years since I screwed up flying a fish, so I thought I'd give it another try. Do you, you have like a, an yes. apron or something? Yeah, I got an apron for you. Not that you can't handle it, but it's smaller. Yeah, I was, was handing that. That one was for you, my man. <laughs> yeah. The first thing you're going to do is I'm going to get rid of the collar. So you got to get up under that bone, up on top here. Just stick your knife right in that spot, and it'll just come right out the skin. And I'll push it right out the top. The lean cod has a really dense bones across the okay. spine here. Okay. So it makes it hard for to push a knife through them. But if you hold the knife just right, you can get it to where the knife will just slide right through. And once that cuts through, you'll flip the fish over. Discard the collar. And then just right down behind that fin and get rid of that belly right there. And you're good. All right. You put your arms through those holes now. There you go. Perfect. Take this, press it kind of down at an angle so you're hidden for the spine, and then turn your knife back up once you get there. Then you just push it through. And keep on pushing it through. Once you get past those ribs, life gets easier. Okay. <laughs> now you're gonna run it as close to that spine. You'll feel the, the spine on your knife right out the tail. Nicely done. Trim and discard the soft belly meat and separate the rest of the meat from the thick skin of the fish. Ling cod is a forgiving fish to cook with. Bake, broil, grill, fry, or sear, it's the utility player of seafood. It's a really thick hide. Yep. Once you get a nice flap there, you wanna grab it and saw under. And this is how we check ourselves. <laughs> You'll fix that for me? that up. As you can see, it's not as easy as Kalis makes it look. Filleting is an art. So all these extra pieces that you guys are cutting off, what happens to all of this? We donate to the bear sanctuary. Oh. That's what we call it. Yeah, oh. the bear sanctuary. That's we give great. Them salmon scraps and lingcod scraps. So I love that nothing's going to waste. Like you guys are, there's a, there's a purpose for every, for every pretty much every yes. part of the fish. Brown bears in Alaska have a symbiotic relationship with salmon. But as the world continues to warm, that relationship is changing. In recent years, many pink salmon runs have failed to materialize, while elderberries, another Alaska brown bear favorite, have been coming into fruit early, resulting in a shift in when and how brown bears feed themselves. Ecosystems are a delicate balance, and once that scale is tipped in even the smallest of ways, the effects are felt all the way down the food chain. Even for us humans. It is due to these shifts that, in the future, what lands on our plates may not be so predictable. And to me, this is one of the most important steps that we do here, because this is the end product. This is what the customer is gonna look at. This is going straight to the blast freezer. So obviously you're not trying to cram like a bunch of fillets on one no, sheet. No, no, or... you don't want them touching. Yep. We want them all to look as great as possible. We line them up. This is where we give it, you know, this is the last line of defense as far as quality control goes. 
So our blast freezer goes all the way down to about negative 50. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, which is our freezer inside of our freezer that's about negative 20. That's the temperature inside my cold and lonely heart right now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll ask those do that too. <laughs> it's cold. Pretty much exactly how you lay it is how it's going to freeze. Yep. Okay. Yep. Is that better? It's good All enough. Right, thank you. We're going into the freezer right now, right? Yeah. Alice, okay, you're going to need your jacket. Let me, let me go grab my jacket. <laughs> okay. So uh, we have the lot number that tells the vessel the day it was delivered. Um, that's recorded on here. I think one of the differences in our frozen fish is the freezing process, and we're monitoring that very closely. We're not just filling a freezer and eventually it's frozen. Yeah. We're making sure our freezers are running optimally at all times by tracking the temperature and the time it goes in and the time it goes out. So we know that our freezers are running optimally, the fish are freezing within an hour. And then my, this is the this is my, the blast. My nostril hairs are, are immediately <laughs> frozen. <laughs> Wow, it's really cold. All right, so this, this is not even our cold freezer. Four right. muscles, Alice, four muscles, got it. Okay, let me turn it this way. All the way in. All the way in, spin it. Spin it. Wow. All right, let's get out of here. <laughs> oh my God. You guys need t-shirts that say I survived the Sitka blast freezer. <laughs> All right, let's That's get out no of here. Joke. The fish, once frozen, are packed into an oversized box, stored in a climate-controlled shipping container, and sent out all over the country. Once it leaves Alaska, it has to be cared for all the way to someone's doorstep. We figured out that, that we could ship frozen containers of fish, barge them to Seattle, and then have them trucked to the Midwest. It uses 40 times less carbon than Wow. Fresh fish. And we put temp loggers in, they can be kept at 20 below through that whole process. Sure. You say it uses 40 times less, which is awesome. And it reduces the waste that hits landfills by not using styrofoam mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. But I imagine there's still some amount of carbon emissions. Are you doing anything to offset that? Yeah, we purchase carbon offsets. 1% of gross revenue goes back to environmental causes, carbon offsets. We're doing a feature length documentary on kind of small scale fishermen. Just stuff that we think is important to make the world a better place. Why Madison at all? What about Madison makes it a, a home for you guys? Madison's a great food town. You have a customer base of people that care about where, where their food comes from. They really want healthy quality ingredients. So um, that's, it's a great place to sell fish, but it was really just luck. My business partner, Nick, went to undergrad and grad school here. Got it. And so that was, that was the connection that that kind of got it going in Madison. Very and it, cool. this, this town has really embraced us. I'm ready to embrace you tonight uh, <laughs> and eat some of that fish. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm ready for it. Should we hit the road? Yeah, let's All go right, for it. All right, cool. Go grab a box for, for Alice. Come on in, man. Woo. Hi, come on in. Our gracious host for this evening is Alice Choi. And on the menu tonight, bouillabaisse, made by Chef Dan Fox. We've gathered together again. This time, there isn't a mountaintop view, but there is wine. So why is the rosé a good match with the bouillabaisse? Do we know? Probably has a little bit of body. It's uh, enough acid. It's light. It's just like same color. You have saffron in here. It's a lot of white fish, so red, even at lighter red would be a little bit much. So it should be just right. But I'm the fish guy, so I'm just kind of winging it when I talk about wine. <laughs> Cheers! Stock made with ling cod fish bones, rounded out with juicy tomatoes from Shady Maple Acres, and farm fresh canola oil based out of Marshall, Wisconsin. So Rui Bays is something I learned in how to make in Marseille. There's many different ways to use it. Um, what I learned was that you want to use what's fresh and most vibrant and accessible to you right in the moment. I'm gonna deglaze with some perno. It's pretty classic for making bouillabaisse. If you're gonna be friends with a chef, get some fire insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Woo!
Yeah. All right. All right. Perfect. I actually did ask before I came today what yeah. the exhaust <laughs> situation was like. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're going to add all roasted bones, all the baits for our stock here. Then ladle this through. Then we have to cook the bouillon for about an hour to release the flavor. Now we have our roasted bones, our roasted vegetables, tomato paste. So Marsh, it was so great to visit Alaska and visit the plant in Sitka. And I feel like I learned so much. What would you say for like the average consumer? Like how would they learn about sustainability? The first thing you can do is try to get closer to the producer. To so search out who actually is catching your seafood. I think that's really important. There's a Seafood Watch app that you can look up seafood. In today's world, you could be buying shrimp that were peeled by slave children in Thailand, or it's tricky to know what you're getting. And the seafood system is kind of purposely opaque. People can sell whatever they want. So I just think, do your research, look up each fish species you're eating, look at where it comes from, look at who's producing it. Uh, you know, use that Seafood Watch app to look at whether it's like a green and yellow or a red one you shouldn't eat. You know, there's certain fish species you just shouldn't be eating at all, bluefin tuna, for example. So, I mean, it, it, your, your consumer choices matter, so take the time to try to make the right choices. You want some yeah, whole Yeah, let's some whole. I left a bunch whole, but I just perfect. got some chunks of meat. So, is this enough? You that's want awesome, me? that's perfect. Okay. I'm gonna need some of those bones for the stock. Yep. Waste not, want not. The best part about this hearty dish is how little food waste it produces by using every part of the fish right down to the bones. Dan finishes off this aromatic bouillabaisse with a sprinkle of Korean chili flake and fresh and vibrant fennel. Phoebe and Madeline, it's dinner time. Come sit down, it's dinner time. Great food, friends and family. This is what it's all about. Have you guys had bouillabaisse before? No, first time. You guys know Chef Dan and you've met David before. This is Marsh and he comes from a family of fishermen. What's it like being a fisherman? Uh, sometimes it's really hard on your days where it's, you have a bad day that's really stormy and you're getting tossed around in the ocean. And, but you know, on good days, the weather, the sun shines and you start catching a lot of beautiful fish. And when the trip's over, you feel like you, you feel really good because you went through all those hardships and you're delivering these like beautiful fish back to port. It's like a really satisfying feeling. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> what drew you to Sitka and why you decided to become a, a share member? I was at an event in Madison and I tasted the salmon yep. and that was it. Like that, that got me in. Um, but as a mother, I really wanted to be able to feed my family and feed my children sustainable seafood. And unfortunately here in Madison, it's, it's hard to find. So I love that I could sign up for a share that was like a good size for my family and it's uh, delivered to my door. So it just like, it worked out for us. It was perfect. It's yummy, mm -hmm. huh? Mm -hmm. I love how fresh everything tastes. Yeah, it's amazing. We just thought it out. And you really still get that vibrant, fresh seafood flavor. Yeah, it's hard to tell it was even frozen, isn't it? It really is hard to tell. For us, we work really hard and we have these great fishermen, but to get fresh fish in Sitka is even challenging. So like, let alone having that fish be like, leave Sitka and get in a plane to Seattle or Chicago and then delivered to here in Madison, it's like, it's challenging. I wouldn't want to have to manage that fresh supply chain because I feel like, you know, you're guaranteed to be have people getting older fish that's going to yeah. be like somewhat degraded. So I feel like this is the best way for us to like honor the fish and do the, like deliver the best quality. Mm. With the way things are changing and the, the oceans are changing, and what kind of challenges is that presenting for you? Like changing the way that you, ha that you have to fish? Is it? We don't know what's going to happen really. Like, you know, some fish are coming earlier or later. Uh, warm ocean means a less productive ocean, so some stuff will do better, some stuff will kind of do worse. I think we have the built-in flexibility with our shares. If some fish that's not doing well, we can replace it with something else. But I think, you know, there's not always going to be every fish you've always seen. Right. Like, you know, with a changing ocean and other areas of the ocean being overfished, it's not, you know, things aren't just going to stay the same forever, right? So I think, uh, just be flexible, you know, choose sustainability over like wanting to eat bluefin tuna. It matters, the choices you make matter, and I think, uh, I think we'll be okay in Sitka because of, of how many different fisheries people are doing and the diversity, sure. but uh, you just, we just don't know. You just hope, you hope it all 
you're thankful of every fish that comes in. And sure. I'd be thankful just to catch a fish. Yep. You guys are bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> we got skunked. <laughs> Shit.